Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today, we're covering Cortez. Thank you so much for being here. We are on chapter 15, page 306, if you're reading along with me. So we'll be covering chapter 15 today, and then there's only one more chapter left. And then you guys asked for it, so we will be covering Megan and Harry, the real story. It's written by Lady C. I've had so many of you say it was so good, and I'm excited to jump into that one. So we'll be doing that next. So be prepared. Get your copy if you're going to read along with us. We'll be over there soon. But yeah, we're going to finish up Cordia's, and I'm very excited about that. Have to give a plug to my Patreon. Check out patreon.com slash Real Housewives Recaps. That's where we're doing deep dives. A lot of you know me from my coverage of Sex and the City. That's still going on over there. If you're into that show, check it out. But also doing deep dives on Harry and Meghan. It's the unfiltered, unedited versions because we can cuss freely over there. And we do. And we <laughs> get into all the good stuff. So we've been going over her interviews and all the ridiculous things that they have said and done on TV. So check that out. Patreon.com. Slash Real Housewives Recaps. I will be thanking my executive producers later in this episode. And if you want to become an executive producer, check out Patreon. All right, let's get into this episode. Guys, pay attention to the background because this one I decided to show all the times Maggie Pooch channeled Diana. And it's pretty funny to watch. Like this is a totally normal way to put your hand, right? She's not exactly copying Diana in a similar look, is she? <laughs> she wouldn't do that. You can sense the sarcasm in my voice. Okay, let's get into Cordius. Chapter 15, The Greatest Kindness. All right, so here we are. It is January 2020, and remember, things haven't gone well. Harry and Meghan are awful people. <laughs> what else is new? They decided, we don't need to let our team know that we're moving to North America. It's fine. They'll figure it out eventually. So they didn't. And Harry thought he could just wrap this all up in an email to his daddy saying, Daddy, I wish Jay was here so he could do the voice, but he's not. But I say, Daddy, fix this all for me. We're moving to North America, but still keep paying us and providing security. Yeah. Okay. So January 8th rolls around. And apparently, according to Valentine Lowe, the rest of the royals were given only 10 minutes notice before the Sussexes decided to launch their statement, bidding farewell. We've done all our, sir, you know, all that bullshit. <laughs> like, <laughs> we've done so much for this country. We're gone now. We're out. Oh, by the way, look at this. That stupid red dress. Look at the straps. That's totally coincidental, right? Totally not. Hey, look at me. I'm channeling Diana. It's just coincidence. Hmm. P.S. Diana looks wonderful. Megan, I hate that dress so much. It's one of the worst things she wore. And that's saying something because she wears a lot of dumb stuff. So this chapter goes into the rift within the institution. And they call Harry and Meg the self-exiled Sussexes. And they discuss how they throw barbed criticism across the Atlantic for years to come. <laughs> the book came out last year, 2022. And those two are still at it, throwing barbed criticism across the Atlantic. Valentine even points out the implication that they made on Oprah Winfrey interview that the royal family was racist. But a friendly reminder, Harry's gone on to deny this claim. We've gone through it. You know how that just makes me absolutely bonkers. <laughs> he's saying these things, she's saying these things, and then he spins it around. It's like, no, I didn't. It was the British press. Okay, Harry. Harold, I don't always get distracted by the background pictures, but I am today because look at this. It's all so staged and pre-planned. Everything is Diana. I had seen this stupid top on Megan and didn't really give it some thought until I saw this. I'm like, oh my God, that's exactly what she's doing. She does everything like Diana. And I don't, I assume it's so she can garner sympathy or... I don't know. People generally were favorable about Diana, so that she's hoping to garner a favorable opinion about herself, or it's some weird thing with Harry and his obsession with her mother. His mother. I don't know. So we hear a lot in this chapter about how the courtiers were working behind the scenes, really trying to come up with solutions for Harold and Fraud, and what would be an arrangement that would work out for both them and the royal family, and how they could this whole thing work because at the time the team was operating under the assumption that they did want to make it work now we know different 
But they had come up with five scenarios, which ranged from Harry and Meghan spending most of their time being working members of the royal family, having a month off every year to do their own thing, um, all the way to spending most of their time privately, but doing a select number of royal activities. There was a positive atmosphere in the room, and the team was truly trying to find a solution. The same could not be said for Harry and Meghan. By the end of the week, the five scenarios had been worked through. The view from the palace establishment was that anything that they did would reflect upon the institution, and that meant that normal rules about royal behavior would still apply. So again, this is not going to work for Harold and Fraud. They will not listen to anybody else. They want everything that comes with the, you know, titles. Of course, they're still holding on to those, but they want everything that comes with all the perks, but none of the work. Everything we've been saying about them, right? According to the book, the Sussexes wanted their freedom, quote, freedom to make money, freedom to dip their toes into American politics. You guys, I don't get political here. Regardless of what side of your fence on fence you're on, whatever, it's fine. I'd say both sides are pretty screwed up and we don't need any more in our American politics, right? <laughs> we're good. We're, we're good. We don't need any more help. <laughs> Definitely not from these two losers. My God. <laughs> but there were no way for the two sides to reach an agreement on that point. Crucially, it was the queen who took the view that unless they were prepared to, to abide by the restrictions that applied to working members of the royal family, they could not be allowed to carry out official duties. One source is quoted to say, there was a very clear view. You can't be in and out. So putting the kibosh on what Harry and Meghan had planned, they wanted to set their own rules. That's the theme we keep seeing over, over right? If they don't get their exact way, they throw, they throw tantrums and that's where we ended up they ended up throwing tantrums going to oprah all that stuff throwing out the racism claims so valentine at this point again i'm pointing out he's discussing it's january 2020 when they just throw these bombs and walk away it was one year exactly because it was january 2019 when they said that megan was having her dark thoughts you know where i'm going with this and that, quote, she went to someone from the institution saying she needed to go get help. Okay. Valentine goes into this. And there, his point was, would anyone really tell a pregnant woman that she could not get mental help because it would, quote, not be good for the institution? That was Harry's claim. Remember that. Harry himself had already had counseling. He talks about this. Why didn't he help Megan find the help that she was looking for if this was actually the case? I'm choosing my words carefully. You know, I've danced around it and then I just came out and said, I don't believe it. I don't believe anything that they say. You know, it's just too coincidental. This is why I did the Diana comparison this time is because that was something that Diana had been open about is struggling while she was pregnant with these thoughts. And then, hmm, coincidentally, Megan, same thing. Same, same. But regardless, let's go on the assumption it is true. And God forbid, because that's awful. Obviously, we don't want to shut on anybody. Um, why, didn't, why didn't Harry get her the help she needed? Why did he forget that since 2016, he started that, I don't know if he started it, but he was involved in that Heads Together campaign that, oh yeah, it says he launched with William and Catherine to try to persuade people to overcome stigma surrounding mental health. So that's such a key point. We've talked about it before, but I didn't even think about it in that terms. Trying to overcome stigma surrounding mental health, and yet his excuse for not getting his wife help when she truly needed it, or they say she truly needed it at her lowest, is because of the stigma that <laughs> he says that the, the royal family didn't want the stigma attached to it. So just more... I. I'm just digesting this as I'm talking over my notes and it's just more bullshit, right? It's just more bullshit. Oh, I feel like I'm losing my mind a little bit. I might need to go see a therapist. Okay, so there's another puzzle. If Harry was so ashamed to admit to his family, then 
why was it easier for Megan to admit the, the, the thoughts, I guess, to the unnamed member of the institution? Remember, that was the claim. They went to some unnamed member of the institution um, and was sent away, basically. But then also, Valentine points this out, and this I would totally forgotten about. Okay. In the Oprah interview, Megan talked warmly of Julia Samuel. She's a psychotherapist who was a good friend of Diana's and who has remained close to Harry. She has, Megan said, continued to be a friend and confidant. That's a quote. So then why not go to her for help? Valentine even says, so presumably she would have been the ideal person to go to. So also during that time, the institution was noticing and wondering if part of Harold and Fraud's problem was their concerns as to whether they were going to be able to earn money. She, they specifically call out Megan. An insider wondered if Megan's concerns was whether she was going to be able to earn money for herself given her position in the royal family. Although Megan was not making money out of the deals she was negotiating at the time, she did the voiceover for Disney Wildlife documentary. Remember, we talked about that, that uh, Lion King thing, where there's another, to quote Samantha Porcupine, about the South Africa, (laughs) South African actor talking to her. But anyway, um, that same event, she had met with Bob Iger and ended up arranging to do the documentary for Disney Wildlife in exchange for a charitable donation. Some suspected that in the end she wanted to make money, and the only way she could do that was by leaving her royal life behind and going back to America. Now, my funny thought was, remember, that was one of the first things I remember hearing that came out was what they had trademarked, was it Sussex Royal? I need to go back and Google it. I believe that's what it was. And allegedly they had taken out all these, like all these tchotchkes that they were going to stamp their names on, including like pens and notepads and things like that. I think thermoses, like coffee, you know, <laughs> just trinkets that they were going to try to peddle their royal names onto. And I, I find that very funny. So that's her idea. That's a way to keep it classy, right? I mean, listen, I love a good coffee mug. And if you need a good coffee mug, I've got them. Recollections may vary. No, that really wasn't a plug. I'm saying I love a good coffee mug, but I find it funny that Harold and Fraud wanted to stamp their stamp on coffee mugs as well and had those out there while remaining part of the royal family. I don't know. <laughs> it's just, it's a funny contrast to me. So a very funny quote comes on page 13. Uh, 317 of this book where somebody it says it just says a former palace insider has said I think Megan thought she was going to be be the Beyonce of the UK being part of the royal family would get her kudos so that's where I mean they, they go on to talk about other things but that's exactly what it is she thought she'd just walk in and be the I know and I know not everybody's a Beyonce fan. Pick your pick your celebrity. <laughs> I think she thought she'd be Diana, truthfully. I don't know. I thought I think she thought she'd be Beyonce or whoever your flavor of choice is. And um and what she didn't realize is it takes a certain amount of charm, charisma, whatever it is, to be that person, and she just she just doesn't have it. She just doesn't. And she leaves a wake of people who all say the same thing about her awful behavior and personality behind her. So I just don't think, I don't think you're going to be beloved by doing the things that, well, both Harry and Meghan have been accused of doing. So again, Valentine is going into, you know, they could have come up with a solution for these two. They could have make it made it work. They were really trying to work with them, but... Lo and behold, it doesn't sound like they were interested. Look at that. I'm sorry. I just get distracted. Look at that hand gesture. Totally natural, right? Totally not trying to be Diana there. But the palace aides were really, truly trying to make this work. And they came up with this huge plan. And then they realized, oh, they don't want to make it work. They just they just want to split, but, <laughs> but have all these grievances on the way out. So that way they could paint themselves as the victims. 
Valentine at this point goes into, it was December 2021, nearly two years after she left Britain when Megan unfortunately had a resounding victory over the Mail on Sunday case. Now, we discussed this at length in Tom Bauer's Revenge book, so I would highly suggest go back and listen to that because we've been there. But basically, it's a crock of shit. It sounds like she got a summary judgment, so nobody ended up having to go on the stand and it just, it was like the Amber Heard UK case all over again. That's all I'll say about that. But it did, however, expose Megan as a liar McLiar face. I don't know. <laughs> that She ended up having to backtrack because she had to write an apology because of um, denying working with Scobie. You know what's interesting to me, and I couldn't find the answer to, so you guys might know this. She had to write this apology for lying about working with Scobie. We know this. Scobie also told the court, quote, any suggestion that the Duke and Duchess collaborated on the book is false. Okay. He's lying, right? It's since come out that they absolutely did work together. So did he have to write an apology as well? And and so many of you put in the comments, how? How are you able to just go in and lie like that? Like, <laughs> it's just so crazy. <laughs> Normal people like us could not do that. I would be in jail. I would, <laughs> it just, it, I laugh because I'm uncomfortable. It just blows my mind that, that the rules just don't apply for them. People like this, the rules just don't apply. Funny side note, when I was doing research for this episode, I found out the day after she put out this statement, the sun put this out. I found it so funny. So the son put this out calling Megan a little miss forgetful because you guys, she forgot. She forgot she helped <laughs> write this book, Finding Freedom. She forgot about that. You know, that's something that you would do, <laughs> right? Totally. But uh, I just found this uh, this picture very funny. I'm sure old Hank and Skank were calling it one of the est words that they sure love to throw around. So with this, not only Megan did Megan get the victory she wanted, she had been proven right. Her advisors had been reluctant for her to take legal action because it made no sense. <laughs> she was suing over the letter getting leaked, the letter that she had already kind of leaked through the... We've been through it. But anyway, hypocritical much. H is for hypocrisy. My God, I'm going to hit myself over the head with this book, I swear to God. But... <laughs> um, Anyway, so she, you know, she gets to go on and be like, I'm the victim, I win, whatever it is. I don't know. Put out some bullshit statement and that's that. <sighs> I'm just so glad people are seeing through her now. You guys, we saw it and now, yeah, now we can really see it. And, you know, the house of cards is crumbling. So there's that. I take solace in that. So that's it for chapter 15. There's one chapter left on behalf of the people, and then we will be moving on to Lady C's book, Megan and Harry, The Real Story, and I cannot wait for that. So let me know your thoughts below. I also picked up Tina Brown's book, The Palace Papers. I really don't know anything about that, but since I'm deep into this, I am down to pick up any book that you guys tell me about, and I believe this was one that was brought up as well. Now, I think if I remember correctly, the Palace Papers takes a, I forget what the deal is. There was something like maybe it's not so nice to King Charles. I can't remember, but I'm willing to take a look and do kind of like I did this book where you pick out the best chapters and uh, talk about that. If you guys want to, I'm open for suggestions. So leave me comments. You know, I love those and uh, we'll dive into these books. But next, Megan and Harry, The Real Story. Well, I say next. We have one more chapter to go of this book, and then we'll get into Megan and Harry, The Real Story. Should I read it like Lady C? No, I should not. But <laughs> just a funny, I'll just drag it out for, I'll drag out my sentences really slow. No, I'm kidding. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and supporting and all the lovely, kind comments. I really appreciate you all. Um... Yeah, thanks so much for being here. Again, one more chapter to go. We'll finish this book up. And just thanks for everything. I still have Recollections May Very merch if you want to check that out. Also, if you want to further support the show, check out Patreon. You can become an executive producer 
And that's who I would like to thank right now, my executive producers. A huge thank you to everybody who signed up. I can't believe how many executive producers I have now. It's wonderful. If you want to become one, check out patreon.com. But a huge thank you to Kristen. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Paige. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Mr. K. Thank you, Kay. Thank you, Shauna. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Aaron and Frank. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Ann M. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Ann H. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Kay King. Thank you, Glennis. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Dewey. Thank you to Patty. Thank you, Adair Becker. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Amber. Thank you, Annette. Thank you, Barb G. Thank you, Diana LOL. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Allison B. Thank you, Jean. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Pauline. Thank you, KT. Thank you, Jolene. And thank you, Stromboli. Guys, I really appreciate you. If you want your own shout out, like I say, check out patreon.com backslash Real Housewives Recaps or check out my merch. I got This Is a Load of Pants, which is something I started saying when I was covering in Just Like That because it was a load of pants. I got Hank and Skank. I got Recollections May Vary. And I have my Make It Make Sense stuff. So check that out. I'll leave a link below and have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll talk to you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.